Hi guys, welcome to Empower In and also welcome to the Nurse Empowerment webinar series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about allowing dreams. Guys, we are all in control of our experience, but a lot of that is allowing ourselves to be empowered by visions of a better life. So that is what we're going to uncover in this video. This is the second video in the series. There's a total of 11 videos. If you haven't seen the first one, don't worry. This video in and of itself can stand alone, but make sure you do watch the first two videos you can find all of the videos and the future videos, all of their links with date and times below. One more thing that I do wanna mention is if you are a RN and you're looking to get your BSN or if you're an LPN or LVN and you're looking to get your RN or BSN, I have exciting news because I have my first ever scholarship giveaway. And if you look below in the description section, you can see details for that. This is going to be for Achieve Test Prep. Guys, a lot of programs out there, they overpromise and underdeliver. I promise you guys, this is the the exception. They really put their money where their mouth is and I'm so proud to be able to offer the scholarship. So make sure you check it out below. All right, let's get into the video. Step number two, what could you accomplish if you allowed yourself to dream? How does this sound? You wake up, you eat breakfast, you feed the kids, you go to work, the long hard day at work, you work all day, late hours, you come home, you feed the kids and then you start it over and that is your life today for the next year, for the next five years, for the next 20 years, for the next 40 years. You work on the lousy job that you have. So how does that sound to you? To me, honestly, there's really nothing more depressing than that. There's a really famous saying that is 150% true, and that is, without a vision, the people perish. No matter where you are or what you're doing, you have to have a vision for your life, for the future, that the future is going to be much better than it is now. And you always have to be working for something. There's another saying that says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. There's no staying the same or being in the middle. You're either progressing or you're regressing. Now you might find some people that you say, well, they've stayed the same for the last 20 years. Well, okay, they might seem to have stayed the same, but could they have done better? And did they reach their potential? Because if they didn't reach their potential, then they regressed. It is important with everything that you do that you have an inspiring vision, no matter how big or how small it is. Let me give you some examples of inspiring visions that I create with big and small things. One of the smallest things that I do is I really try to touch my patients you know, touch them on the shoulder or touch them on the hand, even just for a second. And when I'm touching them on the shoulder or on the hand or definitely somewhere very appropriate, <laughs> guys, what I'm doing is I'm seeing in my imagination that I'm spreading an enormous amount of love, almost like electricity going to them. And that makes a small step appear, or feel at least, like it's a big step. Another thing that I do is when I'm walking into work, I like to listen to music without any words so that I can use my imagination. And while I'm walking into work, I'm imagining that the hospital is loving me. I know it sounds silly. I just imagine that the hospital has energy. And then, of course, I have to take it one step further. And then I imagine that, that the other nurses love me and that the nursing leaders love me and that the administration loves me. And so when I'm walking into work, I'm creating this inspiring vision that I'm going to this place of just love and acceptance. This did not come naturally to me. I actually started doing this out of dire necessity. When I was a new nurse, I was extremely terrified. I was scared to walk into work. I was scared to give a medication. I was scared to document. I was scared to talk to the doctor. I was scared to breathe in the hospital. It was so bad. My nerves were just through the roof. All I could think about when I was in the hospital was mistakes that other nurses had made and the mistakes that I could potentially make and it was bad. So when I was walking in the hospital, I literally felt like I was shaking. Like the hospital was like this dark, negative black hole that I was being sucked into reluctantly. And I realized as a new nurse, 
I was like, this is not good. I need to be here for the next 12 hours and I need the money and I have to find a way to make this work. And so that's where I got that vision from. Another thing that visions can do is they can help us set goals. I have a goal every day to make my patients feel special, wanted, and taken care of. Of course, there are days when I don't reach my goal, but intentionally having the goal can make all the difference. At first, it might be hard for you to make goals like this, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. For example, the first goal that I started, which was like this, I can clearly remember because I was walking down the hallway in the hospital and I looked outside and it was a warm, sunny day. And I said to myself, oh, I wish I wasn't here. After I said that to myself, I realized that I hear people saying that a lot. You know, I wish I wasn't here, I wish I was there, I wish I was home. And I said, you know, I wanna be different. I don't wanna feel like that. And so I said to myself, I'm going to replace this with a different vision. And I said to myself, I am where I'm supposed to be. It really was a special moment, honestly, because I felt like I had made the decision to be grateful for, for the ability to be where I was. And it definitely had a big impact on my life, and it still has a big impact on my life. I still, to this day, find myself walking through the hallway and saying to myself, I am where I'm supposed to be. Maybe not out loud because people might think I'm weird, but sometimes I might say it out loud because maybe nobody's around. You may, however, as I did when I was a new nurse, realize that you have way more negative dreams, or in other words, nightmares, than good dreams. So one exercise that I recommend that you do is whenever the nightmare comes up, replace that with the exact opposite. For example, when I was a new nurse, and quite honestly still to this day, because working on the floor, no matter what, you can always find yourself in some kind of situations. But sometimes you can find yourself in situations where you need to speak to the nursing director. And the first thought that might come to your mind could be the nursing director or the charge nurse or whoever it is or the hospital administration being upset with you. And this can be very scary because as soon as you think that administration of some sort is upset with you, then your livelihood is almost at stake. And then you could even take that fear a step further because hey it's just in your thoughts and everything can happen in one second so you can even have that thought bleed over into another area of your life such as I might lose my job and then how would I pay my rent or how would I feed my children or how would I pay for my car so all of this can happen in a split second and cause utter chaos however in order to attack those types of beliefs this is what I do and it has literally changed my life and I hope it works for you. So whenever I have the fear of that, then I dream. I dream the exact opposite of what I'm fearing. So instead of fearing that administration or the charge nurse or whoever else is going to be upset at me, I imagine warm, smiling faces staring back at me. And sometimes this is really hard because you might have a nursing director or a charge nurse or somebody that you can never imagine smiling. And if they're in this room, do not point them out because I do not want to get in trouble. <laughs> but do your best to imagine them smiling warmly at you. And I promise you this works. There is a nursing director that I knew or I felt didn't like me and she asked for me to step into her office. And I could tell that it was to, to talk about something that I had done. I knew that a patient wasn't happy about something and honestly, I, I tried my best. We all try our best and you can't please everybody. But some nursing directors, hopefully not yours, but some nursing directors just can't understand that. And so I was asked to step into her office. I knew though if I went right that second without doing some mental mind tricks on her that I was going to be not in a good place. So I said, absolutely, I'll just finish what I'm doing and I'll be right there. And she said, okay. So I started walking around and you know, I, I had, of course I have a full patient load so I'm just taking care of my patients. And while doing that, 
I started imagining her downward frozen face to move upwards, which was as hard as moving a mountain, let me tell you. But I promise you that by the time I got in there, I was a different person because first of all, I was laughing myself. I just imagined the impossible. <laughs> but then it helped me approach the whole situation in a completely different way. And amazingly, at the end of the conversation, she said, I'm not sure what it is about you, but I like you. But we all know what it was. So for this next exercise, go ahead and very quickly write down some negative visions that you've had and replace that with the exact opposite. And what you'll probably find, what I've found, is that the thing that I most feared, it's actually the opposite that I want more than anything. So I hope you find the same and I hope you enjoyed doing this exercise. I'll see you in the next step.